All right, I am in DaVinci now. I've just opened my project uh, of the introduction to my wildlife photography website. Go check it out if you haven't seen www.wildbreath.com and uh, uh, there is different images here. I just wanted to open this one for a change of uh, colors and subjects. And you can see something like that. Um, let's go to the color to the color tab. You can see uh, let me disable the dual screen. Otherwise, you won't be able to see the scopes. Video scopes on. There we go. And these are the scopes. So again, same thing as before. Let me push this on the left side. Uh, same things as before. Uh, waveform here, vector scope here, and a histogram here. Now you can see the waveform is showing me a lot of red. I think I can just turn on the uh, luminance. And that's what the tones of the image look like. So you can see everything is pretty well exposed. There is nothing clipped, not even in the bright areas. Uh, there is a touch of clipping, but I color corrected this and I didn't mind that. Um, and then you can see the histogram is showing us that the reds are what is actually clipping, which is probably this part of the image. And uh, uh, these are the exact same tools that you have seen in Nuke. Um, which, has, which are pretty handy uh, when you actually have a video because you can see uh, how things change pretty much. And you can see how they change according to, um, to the clip that we are playing. For example, let me take a different clip. Let's take this clip which is pretty contrasty. Here you can see uh, how the waveform works. There is a blown away uh, reflection here that I couldn't fit in the dynamic range. That's a good, that's a good example of uh, why the dynamic range is important. Uh, it's because uh, you want to make sure that your camera has enough dynamic range to capture scenes where you have dark areas as well as bright areas and still be able to distinguish detail in there. Unfortunately, this is a very difficult situation because the clouds were and the sky were very bright and we have also very dark shadows and we are in the shadows, so we have to expose uh, for this uh, zone of the image. Um, and uh, obviously this means that we won't capture uh, enough uh, detail in the highlights that will be blown away. And you can actually see here on the left side of the waveform that represents um, the, the blown away values. And the vector scope is telling us that we are in towards the cyan blue coloring of the image. So for example, if I change that and I uh, decide that I want to go on the opposite color, I can reposition my vector scope and remove this blue cast from the image and uh, have it uh, correctly uh, neutralized according to the vector scope though, not according to my eye and my taste. So remember that, uh, as we said, exposure as, uh, and especially color grading, which is so a part of the exposing process, it's also very subjective. And maybe you don't like the image so dark, maybe you want it brighter, so we could make it brighter. As you can see, this is a nodal uh, software as well, like Nuke in terms of uh, uh, color grading. So I would have to add another one, another color here, for example, and then I can expose everything up or down. If I look at the waveform, this is a, a cap here, you see it's clipped, so there is no detail in there. So I think this gives you an idea and I'm interested of. I just wanted to show you every software uh, for every category. So Photoshop for photo editing, uh, Nuke for compositing, and uh, the interest of for editing. And uh, similar tools, uh, at least in Nuke and DaVinci Resolve. And now we can move on to the 3D graphics software in Maya. All right, so we are in uh, Maya 2017 and I have Arnold installed here to one of the latest releases. I didn't double check if there was a latest one, but it doesn't really matter. Arnold is the render engine that comes with Maya. And uh, what I want to do here is opening a scene that I have prepared before, a very simple scene just to show you uh, how can we apply um, the concept of exposure to our 3D images. Now, this is a sphere and a plane and a light, so extremely simple scene, and I'm going to render this uh, with the R node in real time, and I want you to uh, see uh, what I have here. Uh, so, in the pixel area, you can see that this uh, sphere here has a constant material, so it's a one single color, and this material is uh, showing pixel at 0 0.18, as you can see there. Let's now switch um, the sphere to uh, 
this crappy Maya lost all my hotkeys uh, so I need to reconfigure everything for the third time uh, and let's switch to this mid gray material which is nothing else than the same color but with the diffuse shading on the sphere so let's apply that and you can see that the render changes real time and that is my 0 0.18 uh, material so now this is 0 0.18 material so if I zoom in and I go to the pixel you can see that is a 0 0.12 it's not really 0 0.18 even though this is the brighter part of the image it goes to 0 0.12 it doesn't go to 0 0.18 and the, this is because my light is dark so if I go into my light um, parameters and I set the exposure back to zero obviously there is no light if I set the exposure back to one that is what I get which is pretty dark so in order to know that my 3d scene is exposed correctly I need to brighten up this light oops 50 might be a little excessive uh, so that my brightest value will be 0 0.18 and right now we are at one so that's definitely too much let's go to six and we are getting closer, so we are 0 0.25. So let's go at 5.5 stops, so exposure. And that gives us a pretty good 0 0.18 value. So we know that now this, uh, um, this uh, scene is exposed for the sphere. So this is the scene exposed correctly with our sphere being in the ballpark of 0.18%. And this means that now we have recreated the perfect or so exposure. Let's see if here we are in the ballpark yeah that's pretty pretty cool so 0 0.18 there you can also in the render view of arnold average for example 10 pixel and this will tell you we are 0 0.16 0 0.17 so we could go a little bit even brighter than that that gives us 0 0.18 precise so this is the idea with um, 3d lighting and uh, you know based on uh, real exposure you want to start from something that adds uh, a measured value in reality since all these uh, exposure concepts are based uh, are based on uh, uh, photography and cinematography it's uh, i think a really good starting point um, for cg lighting to uh, start from this middle gray and then apply the same concept that you apply in cinematography and this is why i always ask people that i work with to light in gray first place everything in place and then uh, we switch to the color shading because i believe this gives us a very good idea of how the contrast is working i can easily measure this in terms of stops now unfortunately uh, i don't think i can measure the stops here I'm not too sure if I can switch this into stops or uh, EV uh, value, but that's a shame if I can't. And uh, I have to say that the CG viewers are usually the crappiest viewer of all the software. I don't know why they don't put some effort into that, but uh, uh, whatever the render engine, they're always missing something. Except that in Blender and uh, maybe Cinema 4D as well, they both have a vector scope, a waveform, and a histogram that you can check. And I think this is really important. So now I could render this, bring it to Nuke, check, and then come back, but that would be very tedious. So for now, um, and when I work in, uh, in uh, Arnold, I only uh, basically check the values and I can uh, um, have a quick glance at the ratio and measure uh, the RGBA values and compare between highlight and shadows. But this is not ideal and I, I would much rather prefer to, uh, you know, have exposure value here. I know that this is my EV0 value and uh, if I want to bring up the shadows here uh, to have a 1 to 3 ratio I just go to minus 2 stops on the left side and I should be in the ballpark of a 1 to 3 so I mean it's uh, it's um, it's much easier once you understand to work with exposure uh, to work with stops so this is what I do uh, to check out um, the exposure in my in my 3D scenes. And in the next video uh, where <clears throat> we will light our first scene together, I will uh, go more in depth in how I accurately uh, check the exposure zones and how I choose the ratios and these kind of things. But for now, I just wanted to show you uh, why it's useful to understand and uh, use the middle gray in the computer graphic scenes as well. 
All right, that was it for this Understanding Exposure episode. I hope that this was useful and started giving you an idea of what exposure is. If you enjoyed the videos, please hit that thumbs up, subscribe to this channel, and remember to also click that bell that is next to the subscribe button so that you can be always notified of the new videos. If you have questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.